This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for The Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin is getting about $16 million in a nationwide settlement with Johnson & Johnson over harmful baby powder. State prosecutors around the country say the company knew the talc in its baby powder could cause cancer. Attorney General Josh Call did not say exactly how the money will be used. Former UW Lacrosse Chancellor Joe Gao faces a disciplinary hearing today. He was fired as chancellor in late December for making pornographic videos and posting them online. Now, Gao is fighting to save his job as a communications professor. He maintains he did nothing wrong. Donald Trump singing Milwaukee's praises at a campaign stop in Racine yesterday after calling Milwaukee a horrible city last week. They say, oh, he doesn't like Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. I said, you got to fix the crime. We all know that. You got to make sure the election's honest. But I'm the one that picked Milwaukee. The Milwaukee crime rate actually fell last year. The Republican National Convention is in about a month. The idea that non-citizens get to vote for president is not only untrue, but good government groups say falsehoods like that plant dangerous seeds of doubt about American elections. Non-citizens are already not legally allowed to vote in federal elections. This has been the case through American history, and it was codified into American law in 1996. David Becker is with the Center for Election Innovation and Research. Today is Juneteenth, which marks the day in 1865 when the last enslaved people in the United States were told they were free. The Juneteenth flag flies over the Wisconsin Capitol in Madison today until sunset. A ceremony yesterday marked the progress black Americans have made and the challenges they still face. Summer in Wisconsin means county fairs. This year, cattle need to be tested and cleared for bird flu before being shown. Bird flu has turned up in dairy cows in other states, but so far, not Wisconsin. Public health officials say it's an opportunity for farmers to sharpen their safety practices. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WAUK News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Milwaukee's police chief is looking to leave. Jeffrey Norman is among 32 applicants for the police chief role in Austin, Texas. It comes as Milwaukee is gearing up to host the RNC. Norman's application was first reported by the Austin American Statesman. He's served as Milwaukee's top cop since November of 2021. A statement from the department says Chief Norman's application status has no bearing on the safety and well-being of people in Milwaukee. Leaders in Mount Pleasant and Racine are meeting this week to work out a dispute over water agreements. The issue is connected to the failed Foxconn plans and the Microsoft projects. The village accuses Racine of violating the contract and withholding water service for new developments. Racine claims it hasn't seen the expected economic benefits from the agreements and wants them updated due to Microsoft's $3.3 billion data center project. Arson is behind 16 fires started in Milwaukee yesterday. Investigators are looking for the person responsible for starting those fires across the city yesterday morning in a time frame from 7.30 to 10 a.m. The fires were concentrated in two areas about five miles apart. Police haven't released any details at this point and haven't given a suspect description. The final day to do a tile is Friday. The community is invited to engrave a clay tile for the parade memorial at Greedy Park this Friday during the Friday Night Live event. An area will be set aside on Main Street near Friedman Alley. It's the final opportunity to make a personalized tile creation, with proceeds benefiting the parade memorial fund. Over 800 tiles have been engraved so far. It's a safety day in the park tomorrow in Waukesha. The Waukesha Police and Fire Departments will be set up between 10 and 2 at Frame Park with events for kids and more. There's further details on the city's website. Later in the day at Cutler Park, there will be what's called an old-time concert in the park that'll be held at the Les Paul Performance Center. And that's what you need to know. I'm Stuart J. Waddles, WAUK News. Marquette to play the Badgers high.
I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Marquette Golden Eagles will host the Wisconsin Badgers in men's college basketball, the oldest rivalry in the state. The game is set for Saturday, December 7th at Fiserv Forum in Milwaukee. The two teams have faced each other every year since 1958. Baseball tonight. The Brewers play the Angels for the rubber match in their three-game series, the crew winning last night 6-3. And we learned that Willie Mays died at the age of 93. Mays once hit four home runs in a game April 1960 against the Milwaukee Braves at County Stadium, the Brewers, Pat Murphy. That's my childhood. You know, my childhood is thinking about the guys I pulled for, you know what I mean? The guys that I, you know, like growing up, you know, I'd be in the backyard and my brothers, we were from New York, so my brothers, would, one brother would be the Yankees, the other brother would be the Red Sox, and I'd be the Dodgers or the Giants. And if I was the Giants, I was Willie Mays. And yeah, uh, you know, what an icon in our game, you know, just a tremendous ball player and, you know. That's Pat Murphy with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. The show must go on after some healing. IndieWire is reporting that shortly after Ian McKellen was told to break a leg, he exited stage left and fell. The 85-year-old is expected to make a full recovery because luckily there was a doctor in the house who tended to the actor. If I had worked one more theater cliche into this bit, I would have set a record. There's no business like show business. Mic drop. It appears there is still bad blood between Dancing with the Stars and former host Tom Bergeron. Bergeron was let go in 2020 after expressing his disapproval when former Trump press secretary Sean Spicer became a contestant. He said he would have disapproved if there was a Democrat cast as well. His passion for only letting apolitical people dance competitively on color television led to his firing. When Bergeron found out the producer who canned him was also let go in 2022, Tommy B tweeted, Karma's a b-. I think the only appropriate way to settle this dispute is with a dance-off. Five, six, seven, eight. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis has found a distribution partner and will hit U.S. theaters this fall. The five-time Oscar winner invested $120 million of his own money for his passion project, according to the Los Angeles Times. The film screened at the Cannes Film Festival, where critics responded favorably. The cast of Megalopolis includes Adam Driver, Lawrence Fishburne, Aubrey Plaza, and Giancarlo Esposito. Megalopolis opens September 27th. The relatively squeaky clean image of Justin Timberlake just took a hit. The pop star and actor was cited for a DWI and a few other moving violations while driving in the Hamptons after leaving a friend's party. Timberlake reportedly refused to take a field sobriety test initially, then told one of the police officers that this was going to ruin the tour. The police did say Timberlake was a total gentleman, but had no choice but to cite him when they asked him to walk a straight line and he wasn't in sync. hi Woody Harrelson was in a motorcycle accident recently while driving to Conan O'Brien's podcast, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, where he was to appear with Ted Danson. O'Brien addressed the bandage on Harrelson's hand. During the broadcast, Harrelson told O'Brien about his accident and said it's a good thing he wore a helmet because he flew over his handlebars and hit his head when he crashed into a Tesla. Instead of going to an actual doctor, Woody drove to the set where pretend Dr. Becker bandaged him up. Throughout the interview, listeners learned that hazing was alive and well on the set of Cheers. Danson says most of the actors were in their 30s, and young Buck Harrelson was 24 when he joined the cast. In an effort to show Harrelson the pecking order, Danson said he and his castmates tried to kick Harrelson's butt, first with physical activity, but Harrelson beat them all in basketball, leg wrestling, and arm wrestling. When they switched to more cerebral methods, Harrelson beat them at chess, too. Who would have thought a humble guy from Indiana could outsmart Hollywood actors? For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, sunshine, a high near 86, an afternoon shower or thunderstorm possible. A scattered shower or storm tonight with a low around 65. For Thursday, an isolated shower, otherwise partly sunny and 71. Showers and thunderstorms on your Friday with a high of 77. Currently, 75 degrees. That's your WAUK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WAUKradio.com.